Welcome back to The Exchange. NVIDIA hitting another all-time high today, building on yesterday's 24% post-earnings bump, and that's pushing the SMH ETF to a 52-week high of its own. NVIDIA is not even the best performer in that group this week, by the way. It's Marvell, that chipmaker surging 27% today, and it's now up 38% since Monday. It also posted a big beat on the top and bottom lines last night. So is this the week that AI really becomes real for the market, or the week we'll remember the bubble taking off? That's the subject of today's Tech Check with Deirdre Bosa. Hi, Deirdre. And Kelly, it is probably both of those things, but certainly it's also the week when dollars and cents, hard numbers, really started to matter in this AI hype cycle, if you want to call it that, when we no longer talk about the secular shift, but one that is happening in real time right in front of us. Bank of America this morning writes, NVIDIA pulled forward the substance of the theme and raised the bar. If your company still randomly saying AI on conference calls with no actual users, product, and revenue roadmap, the market will sniff you out. Enter Marvell's numbers. You just mentioned this, Kelly. Last night, it reported that AI revenue is expected to double this year. They put a number on it to $400 million. Notes generative AI is driving multi-year demand for custom silicon. 29% pop now today. On the other side of that equation, though, we are seeing artificial intelligence cost companies money too. Microsoft, Amazon, Google, their cloud units, they need to upgrade servers and infrastructure on the back end so that their customers can run their own generative AI model. So yeah, new opportunities for them, but it's also increasing their capital expenditures or CapEx at a moment when they're trying to be more profitable and disciplined. There's also the AI enablers, the so Snowflakes, the so C3AIs, the Databricks that specialize in data analytics. They should be the new infrastructure allowing companies to make use of their data to create models. Databricks CEO Ali Godsey told me earlier this week that the models are only as good as the data. So perhaps some urgency for those names to show that they're a real part of this story, as we saw with Snowflake's decline this week. The market, Kelly, was still looking at those disappointing numbers. I always come back to this chart here that you're looking at right now, too. You see, this is an analogy of what happened during the mobile internet era. First, it was the semiconductors that benefited. We're seeing that right now in the hype cycle for generative AI. Then it was infrastructure. In the mobile era, it was Samsung and Apple. Then you had software and services. We don't yet know what the green and blue is going to be. But if this follows the same kind of model, we're going to see those benefit later. Right now, we're certainly seeing sort of the nuts and bolts, the picks and shovels, the semiconductors benefit. What's going to come next? That's what the market's trying to figure out. I love that. And it's fascinating that a lot of the same names are expected to benefit again. Yeah. You know, usually cycles are all different, and yet this one seems to involve a lot of the same players. Deirdre, thank you. Deirdre Bosa. Believe it or not, the Nasdaq is now up 23% year to date on the back of all these massive tech gains. And my next guest says the tech rally still has legs from a different subsector, the internet. Sub I mean, is that it's like the whole thing, but he's particularly bullish on one name in particular. Let's bring in Mark Mahaney, Evercore ISI's head of internet research. Mark, it's good to see you. Um, so broadly speaking, why are you still bullish? You think it's, it's AI or more than that or a different story? entirely. Well, thanks, Kelly, uh, and happy Friday. This is a, we call this a triple trough thesis opportunity for Amazon. Uh, the mm -hmm. stock has really underperformed for almost uh, two and a half years now. It's derated. In other words, its multiples come down for a variety of different reasons, but uh, you know, largely because margins have come under pressure and growth has uh, dramatically slowed down. If you told me a few years ago that AWS was going to be growing 10, 11 percent in a quarter, you know, I would have said sell everything, uh, at least sell uh, Amazon stock. Well, that's what happened. Uh, and so the, now the, the question is, what's the next call on the stock? We think there's an opportunity here for margins to rise. So we're saying that the, 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 the company, both on the retail and the AWS side, is at trough margins. And we think there's a chance for the revenue growth on both sides, the retail and the cloud side, AWS side, to reaccelerate. If we're right on that, we think the multiple will go up on the stock and there's a nice pathway here to at least 20 to 30 percent upside and if you want to get back to the, pre the prior multiple it had you could have much more upside than that so there there i think this is on the retail side that their margin went from over five percent in 2018 to negative is that right that's right. Last year. Now, they. this was a company that was almost, I refer to it as macro squared. I mean, if there was an inflationary cost factor last year, it hit Amazon, fuel, shipping, labor, even even uh, input, you know, source inputs because uh, like steel, because the company was dramatically expanding its infrastructure, building out a lot of distribution capacity. So it just got waylaid by all these inflationary costs last year. So you're starting to moderate against that. If we get a little bit of recovery and revenue growth as consumer discretionary comes back, it will, whether it's the second half of this year, first half of ne uh, next year, it's somewhere in there, that 12 to 18 month time frame. As that comes back, 
you know, they um, that, that should rise margins. And then this was also a company that probably way overbuilt. Uh, they over extrapolated from COVID. So you've got this capacity utilization issue. But as they slow down their CapEx on the retail infrastructure and demand comes back, you get capacity utilization going up, margins will go up. So we've seen uh, big tech be able to switch the narrative on a dime, you know, witness meta, you know, some of the others. Microsoft and Google have ChatGPT. Meta just did massive cost cuts. Does Amazon need to do something similarly, you know, kind of attention grabbing to signal to investors it's at this inflection point. It knows how to drive results to get that margin back on an upward trajectory. And if so, what is that? I, uh, Kelly, I think probably the single biggest thing that the market would, is going to is going to want to see out of um, Amazon is this reacceleration in AWS revenue growth. So those yeah. four kind of levers: retail revenue, AWS revenue, retail margins, AWS margins is probably the retail. It's probably the AWS uh, revenue growth. Look, it's decelerating by you know more than anybody would have thought uh, two or three years ago. No question about it. Now. Can it start reaccelerating? Well, uh, in part, that's a macro recovery call, but it's also we're going through this optimization cycle where a lot of companies probably overbought cloud over the last couple of years. So those contracts are being renegotiated. That's a 12 to 18 month cycle. And then there's the AI, AI workloads. Look, if AI is taking off, if generative AI and large language models are going to become kind of commonplace or you know broadly disseminated across digital uh, companies and physical companies too, that's going to be stored somewhere and it's going to be powered somewhere. The the uh, the compute power and the and the um, and the storage capabilities. I think AWS is a real shot of being one of the biggest winners off that. Sure. I don't think that's reflected in the stock, but it should show up in the numbers. We should see this acceleration re-acceleration in AWS revenue growth. That's what the market's waiting for. All right, calling it here. Before you go, Mark, I want to ask you about Netflix because yesterday the stock was under pressure and the kind of word on the street was that the password sharing crackdown is, you know, a, a huge uh, problem and or not going well. Well, today the stock's up 6%. Year to date, it's up 28%. What, what, if anything, do we know at this point about its crackdown and how that might be going? Well, two, two things. Um, uh, I'm sorry, password crackdown is essentially a price increase. I have three dependents, three, uh, you know, from college and boarding school that are using my Netflix uh, password, the Mahaney Netflix password. So I'm face. I'm either going to, you know, have to cut them off or I'm going to have to pay more. And I think there are other people like me uh, out there. And so, uh, you know, for us, it is a, a password. It is a, it is a price increase. And that's where you're going to see that first order churn impact because people don't like price increases. But then what I think is going to happen is you're going to see more of these password sharers or borrowers start to pay for their own accounts. And that's what our survey work has kind of indicated across three countries across the last six months. That you're going to see 20 to 30 percent of those sh of those borrowers sign up for their own accounts because it's a compelling value proposition, especially yeah. now that Netflix is out there charging you six ninety nine a month, the cost of a you know extra large latte at most places, <laughs> six ninety nine a month for all of Netflix. So that's my guess as to what's going to happen. A little bit of chop in terms of the churn, that we'll get through it, and we'll see the sub ads sort of accelerate and the revenue base, base accelerates. And I think investors are anticipating getting beyond that churn bump. Yeah, no, it's a, a notable pop today. So I wanted to mention it. By the way, my small coffee is approaching $6. It's <laughs> some, some yeah, I'm starting okay. to think, you know, I don't even finish it. Maybe this isn't worth it. Mark, thank you so much. We appreciate it today. Thanks, Kelly. Mark Mahaney with Evercore ISI.